Today's topic is going to be very exciting because I wanted to come out on Wednesday. Um, okay, I got home and I was very tired. I think that's what happened. Uh, but today's topic is going to be very exciting because um, I did a video, I did a write-up on Ugu Kingdom and Benin Kingdom. I was contacted. I was contacted. Um, I was contacted by our people from Ugu, and um, and the roots. Uh, one of them. Um, um, I've called for a public debate, and um, I didn't waste time in my usual self. I asked him for date and time. I'm always available. All right. They also provided. Um, they also asked their questions. Okay, uh, they wrote. They sort of read through uh, what what the excerpts that I got from um, uh, Dr. Eisen's work and um, and uh, they gave their reply. I'm going to be reading all their replies and I'm going to be giving a counter reply. Uh, a lot of persons might be saying that why am I having these people their time? Yes, I have to have their time because uh, so that they don't also become the problem that the Benin Kingdom will be facing in a few years. So that I mean, uh, as that historical narrative is just growing now, is the one who wants to quickly cut it. You know, as Zodena is the one who wants to quickly cut it. Mm. So, mega mu ke koma wo kare do ya miere ya miere be. Anybody can say of your hand, but if you know me very well, you know that meka di witabi man. Ni so bionia bi ni so kwenye my girl. I will do so no my no ba fanya gu no ma heke ni fanya gu. So we are going to cut. Is otherwise going to cut some wrong historical narratives. The beauty is this. I quoted an essay from my mentor's work, late Dr. Aisha Hagosa's work. They have given their reply. Beautiful. I want to do a counter reply. I'm going to be reading all of their excerpts, all of their reply. Then I want to give a counter reply. We are not quarreling, we are not fighting. This is us. We try to put our own history into right perspective. Uh -huh. And that's what I love doing. Uh -huh. So I turn it for now. Only dance day is on us. So we have to now talk about it briefly before we can round up to this segment. Um, I'm not going to be speaking so much from what I know about this. I'm going to be speaking from Dr. Eisen's book. I'm going to be speaking from Dr. Eisen's book directly. I'm going to be speaking from Dr. Eisen's book directly. Um, so, I'm a mago. Uh, just a minute, let me get myself a cup of coffee <laughs> because it's still now very, very interesting. So now I have a quarry, not a cup of coffee at time. So, mm. I guess one. All right. Last two weeks, I made a um, an historical clarification on Ugu and Benin Kingdom. 
um, when I did that, a lot of persons were not, um, a lot of persons were very happy. A lot of persons were not also very happy. Um, I completely understand why a lot of persons are not happy. In course of that, I was told that um, they are getting ready for a, an historical debate. I'm very happy about that. God bless them. When I was told that they are going to debate me on, I had told them that they should give me time and date. That was about uh, five, six days ago. I'm still waiting for them to give me time and date. Um, but before I was told that, um, probably one of the most, one of their learned um, person did attempt to provide answers to the questions that I was, that um, some of the, the article and excerpts that I quoted from um, this book, am I turning it upside down? Okay, this. Okay, you guys can see it. Elegbe. All right. Um, Prince of Benin and Oriental Territories. Okay. So, some questions were asked. Ah, this is in the hotel. <laughs> So questions were asked. So let's go straight to work. All right. For some of you who listen to my first teaching, okay, um, it will be a lot easier. All right. So, all right. Facts number one. There is about how many facts? There is about uh, 20 facts. 20 facts. In these 20 facts, I'm going to be reading them word for word. If you, if anybody wants, um, there's a reflection. If anybody wants it, I can make it available. Fact number one. The writer said, this was sent to me, um, I found a girl. February, uh, this was sent to me February 2nd. Um, question number one, or fact number one, this, according to the person, he said, this is a story of Benin and not the perspective, like, you call Larry, according to, sorry, call, interruption, according to what I was posited, Fact number one, the person said, this is the perspective or this is the story of Benin and not the perspective of Ugu. So it therefore means that he is referring to what Dr. Aisha Nehagosa wrote as coming from Benin and not from Ugu. Okay. Who is Dr. Aisha Nehagosa? Like I said, Dr. Nehagosa Aisha de Hagosa is a man who is from the native of Oben. And Oben is in Ugu, present day Ugu territories. Listen, the author of the book is from Ugu. The author of the book is from Ugu. And like I said, I have studied, read all the books of Dr. Aisen Ehagosa, and he has never written any book by sentiment. He has never written any book by sentiment. He doesn't write book according to what people believe. He writes according to what he was informed of. And when they called for a debate, I'm going to make it very educating. I'm going to make the debate very lively when they eventually face a day and a time. I'm going to make it very lively and very educative. 
How do I intend to do that? First, we are going to have four of us are going to be sitting to have that intellectual discussion. A representative from Umo Unohua. A representative from Umo Nozwagbo. And a representative from Urewe. And I will not be a representative of late Dr. Aishen Ihagosa. <laughs> this is how we're going to, this is how, this is how the answer source the debate should be. Someone will represent Umo Unohua, where the problem is coming from, where these people are quite very arrogant about this history. Another person will have to represent Umo Wonswagbo. They should choose. I'm not going to make that choice. They should go and choose someone that really knows the story from Umo Wonswagbo. They should also choose someone from Urewe. They should also choose someone from Urewe community. I will tell you why. There must be a representative from these two communities because when you want to know someone that is lying, you go to the very source of history. This is not about Izodua or Dr. Aishen Ehagosa. We have to, the three communities that Nevin Amoboka historically, and I will tell you why, is one, Umo Wonswagbo, which I've always said is the natural headquarter of the defunct, now extinct Ugu kingdom. Now, where the grace shifted from, from Umo Zwagbo to Umo Unohua, they will also have their own representative. Let them bring their own representative. Then, we we'll also now go to Urewe. Why Urewe became the administrative and the traditional headquarter. When all of these Ugu Enige wants to do a meeting, of assemblage, they do it at Urewe. They must explain to us why, if they said that Umo Unokwa takes precedence over every other territories in every other places in Ugu, then why do they hold meeting at Urewe? So we must bring someone from Urewe to also explain because Urewe will give you history that Obayan Buddha stayed at Urewe for years. When he was planning the assault against Umo Gonzwagbo. So Urewe must also bring their own candidates. Then I will also be there. Then you people will get the true picture. If you hear the true picture from Umo Gonzwagbo, you're going to get lies. Don't listen to them. When you want to get the true story of what happened, all right, don't listen to them because they are the one who is arrogant about the history. Now, they also said that we are being we are being paid. So, we, you should not also listen to me. You should not also listen to Izodua. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. But what, who you need to listen to is someone from Urewe, who is from Ugu territories. Urewe is among communities that makes Ugu territories. And someone from Umo Wanswagbo. Then, when Urewe tells their story, when Umo Gonzago tells their story, when Umo Gonzago tells their story, you make comparison and we'll get the truth. We'll get the truth. This is how we're going to do about it. A daughter, So we're not going to use only the amount because they are the chief corporates. I've always been saying it. All right? You don't, you go to the foundation of the very story to get evidence. Umo Wonogwa is not the foundation of Ugu. The foundation of Ugu is Umo Wonzwagbo. It's the foundation of the history. Alright? It is there we must go to find the truth. Not Umo Wonogwa. Okay. Let, let me proceed. That is on the debate. I'm still waiting for them to fix a day. I agree what? So we if we drag boy, I agree. This is my submission. So that I'm here, my turn or ever. They tell Dr. Aishen Ogi because they have accused him that he wrote according to Benin that Ugu, that is not the perspective of Ugu. I'm saying it. Ugu does not have a perspective. The perspective.
that they are talking about is Umo Unokwa perspective. It's not Ugu perspective. Because when you go to other villages in Ugu, they are going to give a different story from what Umo Unokwa will give. It's just a man giving, otherwise it's um, overbearing, how do I say it? A child who is full of himself and thereby disrespecting every of his elders. Because Umo Unokwa historically is older, is older than Umo Unokwa. Historically. Historically. So, um, we are going to read directly from Ison's work. <laughs> Let me drink some coffee. Mm -hmm. All right. The fact number one that he said is, this is the story of Benin and not the perspective of Uku. I've actually answered there that late Dr. Ison Ekago says from Ugu. So, he is a scientist who based his work based on research and not based on hearsay. His findings... Let me read let me read some second things to some people here. Where he, the sources of his work on Elebe, I think he spoke about it. His sources. All right. Now, these were his sources when he was writing this. He had quite a lot of sources before he put this together. Chief amongst these historians of the land, whom I had the good fortune to interact with, are the underlisted personages. My father, George Idemudia, Aysen, the Onhansa of Ole Arosa, and the Ojongwe, who was then Ojongwe, of urban village. His keenness to ensure that the past of the Edo people was not lost in the oblivion of all recorded history. Rubbed off on us his children and set us on the path of documentation of aspects of the story of the land. His imputes pervade all of the aspects of the story narrated in this book. Chief Igbinejion Erobamie, the Obazelu of Benin. The elder son of the patriarch of the Erobamie family, the Osuma of Obayaweka, and the Omada of Obavorami in pre-colonial Benin. Chief Ugala, Galisin Osakwe, the Obasoge of Benin, and Eskion of the Duke Don of Ewesi village in Iyekoreon, told this a story of Elegbe Prince of Benin, and his subsequent career as a monarch of the Ugu kingdom, along with the stories of Elegbe's many Enige children in Ugu. Number four, Chief Oge Monyi Uyigwe, the Enoge of Oben village in Iyekoreon, told the story of Oben village from the period of its founding by Chief Ogun to its destruction by Baadolo. All right. Um, pa Agayere Uwadia of Igwe Laba, village, told the story of Igwe Laba village, and the Enoge of Oben chief, Oge Wanyi Uyigwe, told that of Ikobi. Uh, then, written sources. Chief Osayon Mbos Semi Gero, the Ogiso dynasties. Number two, intelligence report written by the British colonial officers administering the Benin division of the Benin province. Number three, the newspaper article on Guardian on Saturday. Okay, yeah. I think we don't really need that. Okay. Um, so these were about his sources. All right, these were about his sources. Mm. Uh -hmm. So, fact number two. You know, we've talked about fact number one. Fact number two. The person said. The Oba of Benin is a veto in every war, but they, sh they could not report differently in the case of Ozolwa and Ise, or the death of Ozola at Uzea in Isha. Now, the person is saying that, according to what the, the saying is that, oh, the Benins will always write to shoot themselves. All right? Why didn't the Benins tell the world that Oba Ozolwa was defeated by Oseno Utekon? 
and was also defeated at Uzia in ancient land. That is what he's saying that Oba, I call all Benin historians will never say that Oba of Benin was defeated by Ise and that Oba of Benin was also, Oba Zola was also defeated by at Uzia or was killed at Uzia. That is what he said. The question I asked that I want to ask, how did he know of it? Is it also is it also Ugu story? Is the son of Ute come from Ugu territories? Is Uzia in Ugu territory? How did he come to know of it? How did he come to know? He said, according to him, that nobody says that Oba has lost. One of the Obas was defeated by one of the Benin, whatever called the and all of that. The question I would like to ask: Miyaya. I have read Ise Novi Tekon defeating Obazola in more than four books. In more than four books. And I've even mentioned it in this in one of my live video. In our Nuta, but it's recorded in books. If he said that the Beniz did not talk about it, how did he get to know of it? So that means he's lying. Alright? How did he get to know of it? That means he's lying. Alright? So, that is a question that needs to post to him. Everybody knows Ozolwa travels at Uzia. It's all written in all the pages of books. All written. If he said that, we, the Benins always conscript this history. How did he get to know of it? Then, Point number three, he said, Hugo was not conquered. Listen very well. This is what he wrote. Pay attention very well. He said, Hugo was not conquered, but by a truce. A submission was made. A submission to who? He didn't say that. He didn't say that. All right? A submission was made. But he didn't say that. Hugo was a sovereign within a sovereignty. Look, look at what he said. He said, Hugo was not conquered, but by a truce. Hugo was not conquered, but by a truce. A submission was made. A submission to who? He didn't say that. He now said Hugo was a sovereign within a sovereign. How can a sovereign be inside a sovereignty that is a question i want to ask how can a sovereign nation exist inside another sovereign nation it should answer the question except except he doesn't know what the sovereignty means how can a sovereign nation a sovereign territory exist inside a sovereign territory that is his point number three. He said a truce. Ugo was not come about a truce. A truce between who and who? A submission was made. A submission to who? Who did Ugo submit to? What truce did Ugo made? What part of her history was a truce made? All right? This is a question. This is a fact that they posited that they don't have question, they don't have answer for. They have not, it's not clear. Who did they make truce with? Who did they submit to? And how can a sovereignty exist inside another sovereignty? Because that is what he wrote, fact number three. I'm reading verbatim. Fact number four. The fall, look at it, he sold himself out. The fall of Ugu Kingdom, he, he, he agreed that Ugu Kingdom has fallen. That is what I said. That Ugu Kingdom once existed, but 
no longer exists. Now he now said, he said the fall of Ugu Kingdom. That means Ugu Kingdom no longer exists. Every metasi aedutana. It's just that they are too arrogant and too prideful. I don't know where that pride is coming from to agree to some existential thing. Look at what he said. The fall of Ugu Kingdom was because of the rivalry amongst brothers. Look at it. He's not saying that Ugu Kingdom fell. Alright? He's not saying that Ugu Kingdom fell, but it was because it was fight amongst brothers. In the first place, Obara Benin is a brother to the founder. Now, but the question is saying that he doesn't want to give the victory to Benin. Instead, he, he now corrupted that, yes, Ugu Kingdom actually fell, but it was amongst the fight. He said the fight amongst brothers. Well, he didn't expand on that. We are waiting for him to say, how did the brothers of Elegbe or the sons of Elegbe eventually fought that led, that led to the fall of Ugu? But he agreed, and which uh, um, he agreed, he agreed that Ugu does no longer exist. He said the fall of Ugu Kingdom, that is Ugu Kingdom, no longer exists. Are we able? Are we a father? All right. Are we able? Are we a father? The fall of Ugu Kingdom was because of the rivalry amongst the brothers. This has answered the question. <laughs> this is what Isodua said from the very beginning that not CNN that Ugu Kingdom no longer exists. There's an Ugu territory that where Ugu uh, Ugu whatever had 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 its jurisdiction all over. That is what I said in the very beginning. And they said, no, Ugu Kingdom still exists. But one of them said that Ugu Kingdom has fallen. So it no longer exists. That's according to him. But what is the disparity now where he disagrees with me is that That is what he's saying. For, for him to give the victory to the real victor, they had rather give the victory to themselves. That is why I said arrogancy. Emma. Uh -huh. Fact number five. He said Umu Wonswagbo is from Umu Wonswagbo Ori Boy Bay, not Umu Wonswagbe. He's saying that Oswagbo did not come from Umu Wonswagbe, that it came from Ori Boy Bay. This is completely badadash. Completely bad at that. He should give us because when we when when I proved that Umogun came from the term Nozwagbe, I gave an apocrypha story of an all heart of an all heart tree about to fall to destroy the palace and here I have your body, which is a story that is still recorded, that is still remembered till date, and that is where the word came from, Ozwagbo. Now he said that that is not what the story came about. But he should tell us what was the story behind what he wrote, Oswagbo, or he. Why the Oswagbo? He has not answered that. Why the Oswagbo? The Duachi Oswagbo? Oswagbo does not have a meaning in Benin. They should not try to give it a meaning. Oswagbo does not have a, a meaning in Benin. It's. It's 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 a how do I put it? It's a it's a it's a word that emerged from its origin and words, which is Nozwagbe, which is a story that every Umo wants to knows. Now, an Umo Unokwa guy is not telling us that what the story that has been passed down from generations to generations by their own people that is not correct, and yet they say Bini cannot tell them. Their story. Fact number six, he said they failed to account for events of about 400 years before the destruction of the old Umo. He said that we've not been able to tell what happened in those 400 years. If 
according to them, an outsider could not tell what happened in those 400 years. Why can't them, who are Why can't they not tell us what happened in 400 years? In case they don't happen extensively, some of the things that happened in the space of those 400 years were talked about in the works of Dr. I and I will read a couple of them. All right. Now, fact number seven. He said the present Umogun's Rago is not the same as the old Umogun, but some distance away, they call Obodo, the desolate Umogo. Now, what he's saying is correct. The present Umogun's Rago. The present Umogun's Rago. Is not the actual place that the original Mowo was. He's very correct. Um, it was cited in the works of Dr. Isen. It was cited here. Yeah. I'm trying to Okay, I probably will look for it where it was cited. Okay, um, I probably will look um, look at it where it was cited. Yeah, it's it has happened to all communities. It happened to my own community. Almost all communities in Benin were not were not were not in their actual place. We are not in their actual place. For example, I'm from Igbekwe. When I was writing the story of Igbekwe, I realized that um, I realized that I was taken to our original location. It was deep inside, but when after the colonial times, when the the colonial administrators started creating tad roads most of the villages started moving towards the third road so that they can have accessibility to go to other places within and outside the kingdom. So most communities left their original bed place and moved towards where they can have accessibility of the road. But it doesn't change the fact that Igbehwe is Igbehwe. For the fact that Igbehwe used to be more interior and it came outside does not mean that that Igbehwe that was interior is different from the Igbehwe that is now exterior. And that is what I want to try to explain. All right? That is what I want to try to explain to him. The present Umogun's Wagbo is not the same as the old Umogun. It's the same. It's the same. For the fact that they changed location from the original place where it was located does not change that Ema Nokumogun Oswagbore because Yangi moved the Kenya Kaye Ajuno de the Kenya Anami Moto where they will have an accessibility to other places does not change the fact that they are not the same community people. All right, this is what I'm trying to correct there. All right, I wanted to. I just pray 
I just pray I see it. Um, I should see it. It may. Um, now, I want to read. Um, there's some seven things um, I've not talked about. Um, the two communities are different. The Roya don't. Don't. Don't distract us, please. Otherwise, I will block you. I'm not saying you shouldn't be part here, but don't distract us. All right. Not true. My mother is from that village. Um. You have to tell us why you say so, Linda, yes, Daphne. All right, and that's why we're here to cross-examine fact. All right, um, well, I don't really know where it's not true. But if anything is not true, you can you can even call true. You can even call true. You can even call true. All right. Uh, Elegbe number eight points that he wrote uh, is Elegbe property of where it was shared among their villages, namely Ronigbe with Asaiwesi, Umozu, and Umo Unohua with Usu and Egba. I don't know of that. That is not a, that is not our primary concern. So I'm going to skip point number eight. Now, point number nine was Olo Adagweze means the one who has chosen Ada, the sceptre of authority, a prophecy by their father that came to reality. It was like it was a rivalry of brothers for the throne of the father. All right. Now, for what Dr. Aishen have here, he spoke about Olo Adagweze. What he wrote about Oloda Gweze was that Oloda Gweze was the second son of a young Buddha. Um, okay, now I will read from um, um, Page one twenty five. Uh, before that, we have um, Wabotao. Okay. All right. I'm trying to I'm trying to get it from the book so that you can get. Uh, Elibes Edo's son. Look at what Doctor Aishenehagos has said. Elibes second Edo's son succeeded his father as a monarch of the Ugo Kingdom. They are the capital of Umogo. He was the ancestor of the Ugo monarch Igehon, whom Obayenguda vanquished during his conquest of the Ugo kingdom 400 years after Elegbe. The second of Elegbe's children, the second of Elegbe's children was a Nogi who founded the town of Umu Unohua. His name was Olodagweze. He was the ancestor of all the subsequent Enigi of Umu Unohua. The third of Elebe's princes founded the dukedom of Ebazo Benugu. Since the last 250 years, Ebazo Benugu voice has been rather muted. Nye Koryomon's affairs because the dukedom chose to ally herself with Ugoni Koryomon, her neighbor, in the Ugoni Koryomon's rebellion against Benin during the reign of Obaaken Buddha. The crisis was one of the many fallout of okay well, i just don't want to go there now uh, I, I will the rebellions who go near korea and our allies include uboku not so and a basal benugu villages were overcome by benin 
and it has taken the Abbas of Benugu's dukedom this long interval to climb slowly back into favor with Benin. Elebes Elebes' fourth son founded the dukedom of Ewesi. The name of the prince was Usi. Alright? Now, I don't want to go through. What I've been able to establish for people to, to listen to clearly is that in in ancient work, he has stated it very clearly that Oloda Gweze was the second son of Elegbe. All right, and according to him, Adagweze lived in Urewe as a hunter before he became Obanugu. He never became Obanugu. His point 10 is saying that Oloda Gweze, all right, lived in Urewe as a hunter. Before he became the Obanu, he was not an Oba. He was he be, he was the second son of Elegbe. First son of Elegbe continued in the line of becoming Obanugu. Why the second son, which was Oloda Gweze, established the dukedom of Umogu Nohua? All right. So Oloda Gweze, as a patriarch of the all the Enige, or the ants, uh, the the progenitor of all the Enige of Umogu Nohua, was only the second son of Elegbe. And at what no time was he accorded, uh, you go to page, um, you can go to page 80, 85, uh, uh, you go to the page 84, from 82, 83, 85. I was reading from 85 and page 86. All right, go to page 86. I'm currently at page 86. I don't want to read all of those other stories. Now, get it. I'm reading from the points that he has raised. Other ways, he lives in Urewe as a hunter. All right, you know, I said Urewe is also a very powerful community for us to talk about. I'm going to give you the reason why Urewe is very powerful as the discourse proceeds. It was about 15 years after that Adagweze took over the throne because of leadership crisis that resulted in the second interregnum of Ugu Kingdom. Adagweze never took. Adagweze was the founder of Umogu Nohua. All right. No, no, no. I blocked the guy. What concerns me with Uronibe? All right. All right. Now, the question that he now said is fact number 12. He said, the destruction of the capital of old Umogo was after the death of the 20th Oba Nugu. Maybe he's referring to the person I see called Igehon, who was, who at that time was the Enoge of let me read it up to, to your hearing what Dr. Eisen said about Igehon. Okay. If you go to page 124, for you that is... Uh, Page 124 says, Ugu Mona, the Ugu Mona, the king who was reigning in the capital, Umogo, at the time of Obai Ehenguda's conquest of the kingdom, had a name which was written down as a Gehon by the British colonial officials of the early decades of the 20th century. So there is an intelligent report for this. So it couldn't have been that, according to one of them, he said that the palace influenced Dr. Isen. There is an intelligent report on Ugu. Which are projected that at the time that Obayen Buddha went to vanquish Ugu Kingdom, Ogie, Nawa Aro, his name was called Igehon. All right, and quite digging into the histories of the people they were administering all over the Benin territory, they pulled their findings down in an invaluable document which they called Intelligence Report. All right, now he now said that <clears throat> another reason for Obayen Buddha must have decided on, like his father, Oro, while he would keep his effort at the expansion 
of the Benin Kingdom and Empire near our home. He, it was who finally conquered the Ugu Kingdom and we assimilated Iyeko Realm into the Greater Benin Kingdom as pointed out earlier. Now listen, why Urewe is very important in this story. All right? Listen why Urewe is very important in this story. Enguda feeds Ekwata in his campaign against Ogun was cited in the village was cited in the village was cited okay I'm coming was cited in the village of Urewe and he stayed in this village for the long duration it took to bring the whole of Ogun to heal these are facts and evidence he's going to prove now why it is true that Obayen Buddha actually stayed at Urewe. The, the Oba who eventually destroyed Ugu Kingdom. Girl. The Oba who eventually destroyed Ugu Kingdom. These, okay. And because an Oba Abini was in residence there, some of the essential attributes which are usually associated with the residence, the palace of the Oba Abini were put in place at Urewe. These are royal attributes which no other villages in the Orion or territories possesses. They are attributes which the native of Urewe villages village are proud today to show off to visitors. So, for some of the people who is saying that it was not an Oba who actually conquered Ugu Kingdom. Alright? We've, we've said all of that at the beginning. We're not talking about at the later part, uh, Ricky. Edma, Edma, I don't know how to pronounce that. All right. Dr. Aisha Nehavosa said that the field headquarters where Obayahenguda stayed in his conquest of the Ugu Kingdom, all right, in his conquest of the Ugu Kingdom was Urewe. Now, how do, how do people know that Obayahenguda actually stayed at Urewe? There are five things that Obayahenguda erected that was erected at Urewe, that Urewe village, I'm sure that there are some people who came from Urewe community can testify to these five things that I'm going to list, which is not found anywhere else in any community in Oromo till date. So that means if you, these things were found there because an Oba stayed there to do what? Because he had a war against the Ugu people. And which he did, he diligently conquered. All right. Now the first attribute that Oba Ehembuda created that he created an Iya, the Iya. Itan of Edo, Oba Raya. Oba does not stay outside the moat; he stays inside the moat. So when Ehembuda stayed there, he had to build, he had to dig a moat around his palace. At Urewe, the year. No lega Urewe or Yerewa, the Ehembuda Tono or Yerewa, that is one. Number two is Iha. I'm going to read what an Iha means now from, from the book. Number three is Inyanto Ogen Buddha. Inyanto Ogen Buddha. That is number three. Number four, Egun Ogehen Buddha. That is number four. Egun Ogehen Buddha. The number five is Eki Ogehen Buddha. Let's now go to what he said about this thing. The Iya. There is a moat and Iya in a railway village built round the field headquarters, the abode of Ehen Buddha during the campaign against the Ugu kingdom. The moat was in imitation of the moat in Benin City, where the ethos had developed that the Oba's palace place of domicile, that is, his palace, must be located within a defensive moat system. Obagi Raya, the Oba does not live outside the confines of a moat system. The moat system is found giggling no other habitation in Ugu but Urewe village. An Urewe person can testify to that. Number two, fact that proved that Obayen Buddha actually strategized from Urewe to defeat. 
the Ugu people. All right. The number two is the Iha. Within the confines of the mode complex in Urewe, Yenguda had his abode. And in the premises, he dug an Iha. As in the Benin Palace, the Iha was a deep well dog in each Ugali robber quadraco in the Benin Palace for the disp um, The Enige is usually, it is found in, in, the, in the palace of the Oba Abinin. It is found in the palace of the Oba Abinin, you know, uh, Fabio Di Guello. Well, I will not, I don't, I don't dwell on insults. If you have a contrary opinion against his Zodua, you prove it instead of being childish and very ignorant. All right. And so... I will uh, I will block you because you don't have the right. All right. So Iha yeah, is one of it. Um, uh, the fact, therefore, that there is an Iha in railway village. All right. The fact that therefore, don't worry, don't worry, just let him. I blocked him. The fact, therefore, that there, there was an Iha in railway village, a habitation which does not even have an enogi, can only mean that the village was sometime in history once they are bored. Of an Obar of Benin. Number three is the Inyanto Ehenguda. Urewe village also has the Inyanto Ehenguda, the Inyanto of Obayenguda. Inyanto is an Ihimi tree used as a boundary marker. The function which survey becomes subserve in modern times. The Ihimi tree is therefore an ownership totem. All right? The ownership totem of a hamlet of village to inhabitants of the hamlet okay uh, of a hamlet of a village to the inhabitants of the hamlet of village in this instance it is referred to as inyato the land ownership shrine particularizing the ownership of the habitation to a particular group or individual an inyato ihimi tree of a hamlet or other habitation was always planted only on the authority of the overall owner of the territory in which the hamlet was sighted, that is the enobi of the duction. These had to be done before the hamlet could be domesticated by the habitation. It's only, all right, it's only the Omano Nyewo, Omano Nyewo, or Meba Binyatoni, will be able to construct the Inyato at the railway. is called Inyante Henguda. Only a Hembuda had a ownership claim of railway and every other territories. That is what Aishen is explaining. Then the last one was um, the, the fourth item pointed out in railway by the proud inhabitants. An item also intimately associated with by Hembuda sojourn there is the Egun Hembuda. Or by a Hengoda's bathroom complex. The Ego Hengoda was a section of the Uwegwai, the living quarters in the feet palace built for the monarch when he was resident at railway. In the living quarters of the Ego, where all the sun, where, where at sunrise the monarch had his bath, bathing with the protective and empowering herbal liquid in the Oshun, Oshun, uh, Oshun medicine pot prepared and tended by the royal Ewaise guide. All right. Eke Henguda. There is a fifth item in railway named after Obai Henguda. It is Eke Henguda, Obai Henguda's market. A regular characteristic of the presence of the palace. The residence of the monarch of a kingdom and a seat of government is the presence nearby of a market. The emporium where the buying and the selling and all of that. Okay, so um, I've been able to prove right here, right now, that there are five things that are found at there are five things that are located. There are five things that are located at the railway that shows that Obai Henguda actually stayed at the railway. And domiciled there for a while uh, in his conquest, all right. 
um, in his conquest to eliminate the Ugu territories, all right, or the Ugu kingdom. These facts are there. Now, there's a particular aspect I would like to read. Okay. Now, listen. Uh -uh. I can't read everything. If you need the book, go and buy. If you need the book, go and buy. There is nothing here. Everything written on this book is how Ugo Kingdom was vanquished. There is nothing that supports you. All right? So, I can't read everything. If you need the book, go and buy. All right? I'm just trying to read some few points. It was in a real world. You know, I said that when you want to talk about the debates, four people must be represented. They should bring someone from Umo Wunokwa. They'll bring someone from Umo Wunokwa. They'll bring someone from Urewe. And someone to represent this book. Let me... All right? Okay. Okay. I agree. I don't. I don't know anything about Ubu Kingdom. Can you? Can you leave us? You are not the only person from Ubu Kingdom. All right. Except you are saying that Ubu Kingdom is Umo Wunokwa. I know you are not. You are not. Um, you are not intelligent to know the implication of saying that you don't know anything about Ubu. Except you guys have have localized Ubu Kingdom to be owned only by Umo Wunokwa. If every other villages. We are part of Umo Nokwa. We are part of Ugu Kingdom. That is, if the entire Orion, all right, was part of Ugu Kingdom, as it is true, it therefore means that I am also from the defunct Ugu Kingdom because I am from Orion. Anybody who is from Orion, therefore means that he or she came from the defunct, all right, came from the defunct Ugu Kingdom. So. The same rights that you have that you think you know about Ugu Kingdom is the same rights as Odua. You came from Ugu Kingdom, defunct, <laughs> extinct Ugu Kingdom. I also came from there. All right. <laughs> so let me read this. Let me let me see why. Let me tell you the lie of the Umogun Look at look at what is documented here. It was in a railway that all the other Ugu Enige submitted to by Henguda. Listen very well. Why a no say and I do it eco? You remember I said, you remember I said that what if Umo Unoba people are claiming supremacy and all of that, that in Yanya Ugu, ask them this question. Why is it that Aha ka aha duiko aha duiko no kai ugu kingdom ure we anawe? That they would they, they might lie about it, but let me tell you why it is being done at railway. It's done at railway because Obayan Buddha was stationed at the railway. And look at what what finally happened at railway that made railway a sort of an administrative headquarter of the different Ugu kingdom. It was in railway that all other Ugu Enigi submitted to Obayan Buddha and accepted the overlordship of Benin City. It was there that all these Enige collectively attended Ehenguda, attended to Ehenguda until he returned to Benin. All right? Until he returned to Benin. No, 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 you can call him direct. Until he returned to Benin. It was there in Urewe that Ehenguda formally revoked the strictures placed by Benin on the Ugu territories. Strictures which were usually placed by Benin on hostile territory. All right, which which conquests have been decided upon has been decided on, and it was there on the same day that the Enogi of Umo Wunokwa claimed. All right, it was there on the same day that the Enogi of Umo Wunokwa claimed on behalf of the whole of Ugu territories immunity from future hostilities. All right, by Benin. Therefore, after Ehenguda's return to Benin, Urewe village became the permissible became 
the permissible meeting place for all the Ugu Enige. Since they could no longer congregate at the original Ugu kingdom now regarded as enemy territory by Benin. This habit of using a railway as a location where the whole of Ugu congregated whenever it was necessary became established. And it continued up to the colonial times in the 20th century. All right. For instance, when a native court was proposed for the heartland of the Ugu territories in the 1940s, all right, it was sited at a railway village where all the dukedoms of Ugu transacted their judicial matters. The Onogi of Umo Unohua, because of the great increase in size of the population of his dukedom, which was a fallout of the conquest of Ugu capital by Benin, became the most visible Enogi in Ugu. Through him, the Oba of Benin acted whenever he had to deal collectively with all the Ugu Enigi. To the Enogi of Umo Unohua was henceforth reported in the first instance the demise of any of other Ugu Enigi. He then brought the information to the Oba of Benin, to the Oba in Benin. It was also in his palace that proclamations from Benin, all right, which concerned the whole of Ugu were announced. The vassalage capital of Ugu moved to Umo Unohua. You see, it moved from the original place of Umo Wanzwagbo to Umo Unohua. Listen very well. Say the vassalage capital of Ugu moved to Umo Unohua and in self aggrandizement, listen, in self aggrandizement, the Enoge will refer to himself as Obanugu, the Oba of the Ugu territories, claiming the position of premier inter Paris, the first and most equal in the council of all the Ugu Enigi. Hmm? Oh, okay. The guy fell come from um... <laughs> no, no. All of them, all of them, they use <laughs> all of them. They use fake. It doesn't. It doesn't concern me. Well, I have established. Well, I found a girl. I've established facts written and documented by late Dr. Aishan Ehagosa. Unfortunately, all of these ignorant, arrogant people don't even have a credit of a book to their name. Uh, don't even have one credit of a book to their name. If you have contrary opinion, like I said, some of you called for a debate. You have my number, email Kennedy. Call me, I will meet you anytime, anywhere. You people have called for a debate. I heard you guys have a WhatsApp group that you were discussing my matter. If you know me, maybe a lot of you people don't know me. If you know me, <laughs> man, I'm not, I'm not scared of debates. I'm made for it. All right? I'm made for it. All right? There is an intelligent report. There is a book documented word for word that documented the history word for word now what is the problem the Umo Unohua people they have adjacked the Ugu territory for themselves they feel 
that they are the only one uh, that can speak for the entire Ogu. There are more than 40 villages that is from Ugu territory. How come they are the only ones that are busy bodies? Like I said, one who wants to run the debate, four person must be present. Someone from Umu Unohua, which is also Ugu. Someone from Urewe. I have I have explained why someone from Urewe has to be there. Because it was that Urewe that Obohem would have stayed. It is from there that he planned the strategy. And there are five things that Obahem Buddha erected at Urewe when he was there, that is still there. Urewe sons and daughters can testify to that. All right? The Ya, uh, the Ha, uh, the Eki, the Egun, uh, what, was the, what was the fifth one? Uh, Inyato. The fifth one is Inyato, which was, which was cited by Obahem Buddha. These are Physical evidence, not arbitrary, how do I call it? Not arbitrary, uh, ignorance and arrogance. These are physical evidence that has proofs. So an railway person must be there to talk about what he knows. Eh? All right, what he knows about the Ugu. Then someone from Umu wants to which is the original headquarter. Umowu is the Umowu not is the fake headquarter of Ugu. They are claiming they are taking the glory. I've said it before and I'm saying it again. All right. In in their own defense, they are saying that the original Umowu Oswagbo is no longer in existence. Who said it's no longer in existence? If you were in point A and you move to point B, then you'll not you'll not be saying that the, because you move to point B, you are no longer in existence. Yes. <clears throat> they have moved from point A to point B, but it doesn't disclaim that they are not in existence. All right, they, this is not about arrogance. The only thing that Umu Umu, not what people have been saying since two, three weeks, is that you don't know anything, you are wrong, you are foolish, you are stupid. That's the only thing they have been saying that the Benin people. Have contorted the lies, but they don't have any contrary facts to prove. Like I've said, I said some of them who initially came up with this arrogance when they called me online, I told them that you are from Umu Unokwa. He said yes. Do you want to know the truth? He said yes. We are all beneath. Abi, even this elegbo we are talking about. Oh, you buy away no? They said yes. I said. Call someone from Umo Wonswagbo. You are from Umo Wonohua. Those guys in Umo Wonohua, they don't tell the truth. They are arrogant. And in my Europa. And some of them are saying that let Dr. Eisen the Hagosa lied. Wanima ye, Wanima ye ye ke. Wanima finish a primary one. He's saying that someone who is a trained medical doctor that is. Four of his children are medical, trained medical doctors in the U.S. He was a trained, one of the earliest trained medical doctors of Benin Extract. In University of London, a, med a trained medical surgeon, a scientist par excellence, that has one of the biggest hospitals at that time in Bender State, Azua. The U, no matter primary five, medo U we ye, no matter You that is 30 years old, not my error, but the man you were the Oman that died at the age of almost at, at the age of 19. Then who is a trained medical doctor per excellence? Alright? A trained medical doctor per excellence. And who also came from Ugu territory from Oban? They have an history linked to Ewesi. They have an history linked to Oben. His, his great grandfather, Erunse, founded Ewonogbon. A community called Ewonogbon was founded by his great grandfather, Erunse. Erunse gave birth to Aishen. Aishen gave birth to Idemudia. And Idemudia gave birth to Ehagosa. 
It was that Aaron said, Isaac's father, all right, that Aaron said that was Isaac's father that founded the Bonobon and is partly from Ewesi. And at one point in time, in Yale Yanye, a Bazo Benugu, so all their history had revolves around the Ubu territories. They were not me, me, not my Europa. The United States only one should not believe you and believe a scholar like late Dr. Isaac Hagosa. <laughs> you understand? So how do you do that? How, how do you comprehend such such insolence? You are not up to 40. Alright? You've never written any book. You don't even have one single article. I don't even I don't even know whether you can even read and write. Then someone who is a trained medical surgeon in University of London, who was the head of all medical uh, um, the I think Association of Medical Surgeons in 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 former Benden states, who became an historian that has almost about twenty five books to his credit. When the mega ya ye, the mega ye were not zwo ye. Of course. All right. The issue is, like I have said, I don't, I don't insult people. I don't insult people. You people have not said anything. You, you, you brought a fact which I kicked against. Even in the facts, I think the one that is saying that is Ekman. I don't know whether it was you that sent the fact that was copied to me. In your fact number four, you made it clear. In your fact number four. That the fall of Ugu Kingdom, you said it, and that answers everything. That Ugu Kingdom has fallen. But what you did not, not tell the people, I don't know whether it's you or some other person. <laughs> All right, you understand. So, what you did not, not say is that how did he fall? You try to give the credit out of arrogance. So saying that it was as a result of the imbroglo, the infighting between the sons. And in one of your facts, I remember you were trying to say that. Um, I think I remember I read. In your point number 17, you said, Oh, by Hengoda has a bad connection to Ubu. No, he doesn't. How? How did Obayenguda has a bad connection to Ugu? No, he doesn't. Proof. Obayenguda's mother is called Queen Umelu. Umelu is not, not from Oremo. Maybe you should go and find that. Obayenguda, when he was a prince, his name was called Prince Odiawato. He here now Umelu. Umelu is not from Ugu territories. So, all right. So, I don't know how many lies you guys are going to lie. You guys promised me a debate. I am ready. But I said on the condition, I gave a condition because I don't want us to be arguing front and back. Because if I talk, if he said a lie, even if not be lie, I don't want us to be arguing front and back. In order to give a permanent truth to this matter, Four persons must be present in that intellectual conversation. I don't need that guru. I need someone who can, who can think. You understand? I need someone that you told me to wait. Why? I need someone who can think. I need four persons. Four people must be represented. A representative from Umogunokwa. A representative from Urewe. And a representative from Umu Wons Wagbo, then and me. All right, my name. All right. 
No, 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 please. What I'm avoiding, I'm trying to put our history straight. Get it clear. We should not insult ourselves. We should not, under any circumstances, insult ourselves. We should not be insulting ourselves. If we are doing my own, whether you said you're from Ugu, I'm also from Ugu, but I'm a proud Benin man. If we are more, if we are doing my own, we shouldn't be insulting ourselves. Anybody can insult me, but what I have said, why you are insulting me? What, it's only a child. I feel I will be a crime and in my rock bar or table. If you have facts, if you have facts at your back on, you shouldn't be throwing insults and tantrums because I disagree with your point. I'm bringing my point. You are saying that your point is more superior, your point is more authentic than my point. All right. I can I wait? You talk your own now. You say, why can't you wait till I, I present my... No. You talk your own. I talk my own. A buzz of Ben Ugu, I spoke about it, was the third son. The founder, the first Enugi of a buzz of Ben Ugu was the third son of Elegbe. The second son of Elegbe became the first Enugi of Umo Wunokwa. Why the third son of Elebe became the first Enugu of a Bazok Benugu? I read something. All right. Okay, fine. I agree. Chike Zeugo Chuku. Our ancestors are from Yoruba land. Okay. Okay, I agree. Can can you run along now? All right. Okay. All right. Uh, well, insult does not give result. Insult does not give results, all right? <laughs> I don't, I'm not swayed. Uh, and there's a, there's a passage I wanted to read just now of uh, a way guy. Some of you are from a way guy. Look at what um, Dr. Aysen wrote about uh, a way guy. He wrote something about a way guy and I wish to share it from those who of you are, who are from a way guy. He wrote something about a way guy. I read it some time ago. It was, it's really, really, really nice that um, why I show so that you people can can know a little bit of that uh, can know something about a way guy. Where did he write uh, something about a way guy? How that name came about? Okay. Okay. Oh, that is your village. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, let me read something about her, guys. So you see, since you are here, uh, uh, as a little bit trek back home from his boundary demarcation exercise with the Agbo ruler. He stunt his toes on some roots, accroppings along, along the path. He sustained a severe and incapacitating injury to the toes of his unshorn feet, which temporarily had halted further homeward progress towards Umogo. The party therefore built a camp where they stayed until Elebe's injuries healed sufficiently to enable him to resume the journey home. Elegbe later installed one of his sons as the Duke of this conver convalescent settlement, a settlement which came into being as a fallout of the land sharing exercise with Ag Agbo. The settlement was, was named Ugiegai. Listen very well, Temer. Was named Ugiegai. All right? A creation resulting from a sharing ceremony. Later, the word Uge was replaced with the word Evo. 
town or settlement to give the present a way guy born by the duke down. So what that's why I say here in this saying, if you start from the beginning, was saying that there was a sort of a boundary dispute between Elibbe territory and Agbo. So um, eventually it was settled. There was a ceremony in Ayaga Utoni. Along the line, uh, <clears throat> all right, along the line, Anna do change from Ugie to Ewo. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why well, just want to cry now? Well, you see here, I don't like it. Mm. So, anyway, anyway, why are we saying? Didn't want me.